Hey gang, in this video, we'll get you a little bit more prepared for the A plus exam. Hey, I'm Ron from ITMatchKey.com. And if you've never seen me before, it's my job to help you get certified. So the A plus exam is a two part exam. You gotta pass both parts of the exam to be certified. So on this video or in this video, we're actually gonna focus more on the first part and then we'll focus on the second part in a couple videos down the line. So before we get into that, I actually wanna give a shout out to uh, Jeff Foster, a long time supporter. Hey Jeff, appreciate all the love. So he said that I'd never do a video without a fresh haircut. So my plan was today to wake up about 11 o'clock because my hair was looking crazy and do a video, but time got away from me and I had to get a damn haircut. So eventually Jeff, you will see me one day on here without a haircut, but not today. So if this is your first time doing a practice exam with me and going through these questions, the way that we usually do it is like this. So I'll read out the question, give you some time to come up with the answer on your own, and then we'll talk about the answer as a family together. So before we get straight into the questions, the A plus is a two part exam, like I told you, and both exams have 90 questions and you have a total of 90 minutes to knock out those questions and those simulations and those scenario based questions. So without further ado, here's the first question. Sheila is a new intern for Cyber Master. She is always busy completing tasks for high level executives. An executive tells her he needs three very important labels printed and put on his desk ASAP. Sheila prints the labels and places them on the exec's desk. A few minutes later, the exec comes to Sheila absolutely infuriated. He screams, every few lines of the label is missing. What did you do? The exec demands she fixes the problem immediately. What should Sheila do? Sheila goes to the printer to begin troubleshooting. The printer is a thermal printer and has been working fine for some time. What should Sheila do to try to fix the issue Should she resend the labels to the printer, install new ink cartridges, realign ribbon print heads, or empty printer cash and refill paper? All right, gang, hopefully you came up with realign the print heads. So in printers in general and in thermal printers, if the print heads aren't aligned properly, it won't print everything. It may skip a few lines. It may print double lines. So if they aren't actually aligned correctly to stamp where they're supposed to stamp, this issue could happen. Now it could be a multitude of other things, but with this scenario, it would most likely be that the ribbon or the print heads were misaligned. So uh, talking about with this scenario, make sure you actually inside the testing center, when you actually inside the room, that you focus on what the hell this scenario is talking about. Don't think about what happened at your job. Don't think about what I would do. Just think about this scenario only. A lot of times we try and factor in other things, it's gonna have you um, looking pretty bad after you take the test. All right, so let's get to the next question. Janelle just moved into her downtown apartment. She'll be working from home, so her network has to be optimized. She sets up her WAP and begins working with zero issues. Around lunchtime, she notices that her internet connection seems to be intermittent. She has several wireless devices within her home that she uses regularly. What can Janelle do to improve her connection? Should she restart her WAP and router, then leave it unplugged overnight? Should she restart her router and place WAP on the farthest end of the apartment? Should she put router on a channel bonding and put the WAP on standby mode? Should she restart her router and WAP, move WAP closer to her work device and away from all the other wireless devices? So gang, okay, hopefully you pick the last option. So if you restart your device, restart the router and restart the WAP, a lot of times that'll go ahead and get rid of any configuration issues, any intermittent issues that are just need to recalibrate. Or recalibrate. I almost had a seizure. It, needs to, it may need to recalibrate. It may need to 
um, just get itself back together, right? A lot of times in IT, you'll notice just turning the damn thing off and turn it back on to fix it. And then as far as the connectivity issues, a lot of times, if you have a lot of other wireless devices and they're on the same channel, if they're on the same frequency, they may have connection issues. They may actually be interfering with you actually connecting to the device. So moving your WAP away from those things and closer to what you're actually trying to connect to uh, may actually work a lot better. And a lot of times, if you have a wireless router and you have other WAPs, sometimes your device gets confused. Sometimes instead of connecting to or trying to connect to what you're right next to, it'll be connecting to something on the other side of the house, right? Anyway, for this scenario, um, restarting the WAP and restarting the router and then moving the uh, actual wireless access point closer to you would be the most feasible, make the most sense. And since we're talking about this, WAP, right? If you didn't know what the fuck WAP stood for, then that would pretty much make this really difficult, right? It'd make it really difficult. So just remember that on the actual exam, there's gonna be a lot of acronyms, right? A lot of acronyms. And you, so if you ever are studying, you need to figure out what something stands for, what something does, so on and so forth, make sure that you do that. Cause inside the actual um, test, there probably won't be um, a lot of things spelt out. And then a lot of times, if you used to seeing something spelled out and then it turned into an acronym, it can make things confusing. Okay, let's go to the next question. So before we get to the next question, do me a favor, like this video for the YouTube algorithm, and then make sure you subscribe to Master IT so I can continue to make videos just like this. Jerry has formed a partnership with a company that's located out of the country. He will have to collaborate with his overseas partners frequently. His partners will need access to files and folders that are located on Jerry's network. What would be the best option for Jerry from a security standpoint? Should he place the files into a vault that's in transit mode? Should he put shared folders on a server that's placed in a DMZ? Should he mail the files directly to his partners? Should he place a firewall on the network with default of deny all. Okay gang, hopefully you said out of those options you picked putting the file server in the DMZ. So the DMZ is the demilitarized zone. So a demilitarized zone is a common access point for people that you want to work with, people that you need to do business with, people that you want to give them access to certain things, but you don't actually want to give them access to your network. So the DMZ would be separate from your actual network. You would put the file server over there and let your overseas partners rock out and do whatever they need to do. So if they are um, doing some weird stuff, they are trying to scam, if they're trying to do something malicious, they would only have access to that DMZ and that file server on the DMZ as opposed to your entire network. All right, so a DMZ just separates my network from something else. And a lot of times you put things in a DMZ that you don't want other people to have access to, right? So you put your file server in a DMZ, your partners can rock out, but no matter what they do on that file server, your actual network or real network won't get affected. Make sense? Fantastic. You're currently using a Linux operating system. You aren't as familiar with Linux as you are with other operating systems. You bring up the command prompt and begin entering commands. You notice you are working within the wrong directory. How can you switch to another directory? What command needs to be entered? So gang, hopefully you picked CD. What does CD stand for? Change directory, all right, that's simple. So. There won't be a lot of Linux questions on the A-plus exam, but there will be Linux questions on the exam. And most of the questions that you're gonna come up or come across is gonna be things like this. What does this command do? What is ipconfig inside of a Linux terminal, inside of a Linux box? Is it, is it the same command? Is it something different, so on and so forth? So just general commands will be the only thing that you usually run into um, as far as Linux is concerned on the A-plus exam. So we've been rocking out for a few minutes, right? Went through a few questions. Have you seen the variants and pretty much all the different things we've talked about, right? So just remember that's how the A-plus is gonna be set up. 
It's not gonna be 10 questions about printers, 10 questions about wireless connectivity, five questions, it's not gonna be like that. It's gonna be a question about Linux and a question about networking and a question about operating systems. So just make sure that by the time that you get inside of the box, inside of the actual testing center, or if you're uh, taking it at home, that you feel comfortable troubleshooting. Um, I got over 200 videos on goddamn uh, YouTube and all those videos stress that every CompTIA test that you take, you need to be well versed in troubleshooting. So make sure that you're good with that and you'll be fine. In the comments below, let me know if you take an A plus this year and when you actually plan to test. And then just update um, me and your cousins in the comments when you actually uh, pass the exam. I'm talking about uh, passing the exam over at itmaskey.com. We got kids, not kids, students, whatever. Uh, people passing the exam every day. Uh, we got full A plus course over there for the first part and the second part. And it's literally people passing the A plus um, on a weekly and a daily basis. So if you're looking for a full course that has online lectures, is available 24 seven, has practice exams and includes the voucher um, to take the exam, uh, go ahead and head over to icmagicy.com. I'll put the uh, link to the course in the description as well. There's also testimonials over there, just in case you think I'm full of shit uh, about the people that's passing, but it's testimonials um, on there as well. But anyway, let's get to the last question. So I didn't want to completely crush you guys. So this one um, is going to be short and sweet. What is the first troubleshooting step according to the A-plus exam? What is the first troubleshooting step? Is it figure out what's wrong, state the problem, document the problem, recreate the problem, or identify the problem? So hopefully you picked identify the problem. So you may be looking at it, looking at that and like, oh, okay, figure out what's wrong and identify the problem. Ain't that the same thing? Or state the problem and identify the problem. Ain't that the same thing? No, no. So there is no technically it's this way or I feel like none of that. The answer is the answer, right? So according to CompTIA, the first troubleshooting step is identifying the problem, all right? So there's several troubleshooting steps. We'll get into those troubleshooting steps in uh, later videos, but right now, right now, the first step is identify the problem. And how I identify the problem? A lot of y'all watching this ain't subscribed. So make sure that you like, hit subscribe, and other than that, I'll see you in class.